Hi everyone, welcome. I'm Eric McLaughlin, one of the owners of Ken Sealy Communities. With me today are two of our main people here at our facility. We have Ken, uh, Ken Sealy, one of the owners. You may know him from the TV show Intervention. Um, and then we also have Mitchell Pearson, who is our director of admissions and our all around great blue guy. Uh, he does a lot of work for us and he's uh, been great to get to know and, and grow with over the past couple of years. And today we wanted to talk a little bit about telehealth. Many people are talking, what is telehealth? What is telehealth? What is telehealth? And everybody's using it. And everybody's using it, right? I mean, you hear about doctors, nurses, therapists, uh, facilities, coaches, uh, even schools using telehealth. Yeah. And the thing is, telehealth isn't really that new. No. Uh, it's been around quite a long time. In fact, I think, Ken, you actually led an intervention on telehealth years ago. Yeah, it was at least 10 years ago. Yeah. All on, it was called Skype back then. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, you were an earlier adopter of Zoom. Uh, and about five years ago, we, we uh, have had the, the pleasure of doing an intervention via uh, tele, uh, Zoom as well. And we'll talk more about that uh, in a bit. But I wanted to talk a little bit about the history of telehealth. Um, I was very fortunate in that when I went to go get my master's program, uh, because I was working full time and I couldn't take time off, I was able to do my entire master's program uh, online on an online platform. Now it wasn't like Zoom that we see today and it wasn't like Skype, it was much more kind of a, a different kind of development, but my whole entire experience at school was virtual, including my um, internship. So I went to school for my MSW. I got a master's in social work. And instead of going into a facility, uh, I did all of my clinical rotation uh, on telehealth. So everything from staff meetings to clinical meetings to intakes to assessments to um, uh, therapy, both individual couples and group therapy was all done completely online. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty cool. You know, telehealth, lots of applications, and many people have actually used it. Have either of you used it, uh, either not for school or therapy, but something different? Yeah, we did Easter on telehealth. Yeah, we were able to meet with our families and do that. Wow. Uh, I mean, I did it uh, in my own personal life through um, Teladoc, um, mm -hmm. through my healthcare yeah. provider, HealthNet, uh, which was awesome, you know, yeah. and very, very, uh, it made me very comfortable because I was able to do it uh, at, at like 7 a.m. in the morning prior to coming to work, so I didn't have to take any time off. So it's uh, very convenient. Yeah, insurance very convenient. wants us to do that. Use teledoc instead of going to a, an emergency room or going to an urgent care. Um, I, same thing with me. I had migraine headaches, and my doctor wouldn't give me my prescription until I went to see him again. And so that was months out in advance. So they said, "Go talk to teledoc." I talked to the doctor there. They wrote me my prescription. And then after that, I was able to set the appointment and go see my doctor to get if I needed more. But I love that. And it was, you know, originally where does telehealth come from is was the idea was born out of that uh, many people live in underserved populations. So if you live somewhere very rural or there's not a lot of hospitals or not a lot of professionals, yet you have something that is a medical issue, uh, this was an easier way to gain access to that treatment. You could literally pick up the phone, tell a doc, call a doc and be able to get some help. Um, and that has evolved over time with the advent of multiple um, camera ready devices like cell phones and FaceTime and uh, what is Skype, the early yep. er, the early version of telehealth. And now we see all kinds of platforms like Zoom and- uh, FaceTime. And yeah, uh, many, many more. And um, that's really- Even Facebook has a, yep. a video option. No video way. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. Through Messenger. Wow. Yeah. I, I never knew that. <laughs> I'm not a big Facebook proponent. Send, send me a tweet and I'll tell you why. <laughs> much, much bigger fan of Twitter. Uh, so, you know, some of the benefits of telehealth, obviously, if you live in a rural area or have difficulty being able to access uh, treatment, that's really one. But what, I mean, what's going on today? That's a really great reason to do yeah. telehealth. Well, I love it because right now, right behind us, we have a 12-step meeting going on through telehealth. And, you know, it's, it's really important because so many people right now aren't able to get out there and be with their peers and they're isolating because we have to we're, we're stuck at home but telehealth has given us that opportunity to be with our peers mm -hmm. as close as we can you know no hugs or anything like that but we're able to share and 
those deep dark secrets and those emotions and the fear and the anxiety. We're able to do that on this platform. And then we also get to do it at work here. Yeah. Our clients basically, as soon as the whole COVID-19 uh, crisis mm -hmm. began, they expressed concern about having to come into the office to receive the services. And so we immediately jumped on board and said, let's utilize this platform that we've already been utilizing mm -hmm. for years. Yep. Uh, and let's figure out a way that we can make it HIPAA compliant yep. uh, so that their health information, that their privacy is protected. Uh, and let's create rooms for and a schedule that uh, we would share to them. So yep. each of our clients are given a schedule. Uh, they attend uh, each group um, at, at the allowed time uh, and they're able to do that from the comfort of their home uh, or the comfort of the sober living yeah. uh, which gives them the peace of mind to not believe that they're gonna come in contact with someone who has mm -hmm. the coronavirus yeah, yeah. Yes. Everybody's scared of that. Yeah, and, and when you think about people being scared, you know, uh, people are really scared about either coming into or traveling to some place mm -hmm. uh, because exposure on airplanes and so forth and so on. Um, and we have a lot of families that really want to participate yep. uh, kind of in treatment, and we encourage that, actually. Or intervention. Yeah, yes. exactly. I was fortunate enough to get to go and um, do a mixed intervention yep. where some of it was in person and some of it was via telehealth. Um, and it worked great. We were able to have more attendance for people who couldn't actually get together and travel, but were able to participate and share their love with that person and be able to kind of give them some support, which was really exciting. Yeah. And I think one of the uh, a great one of the things that I, I love that we do here is that we the group facilitator acknowledges that this is a telehealth session. Yes. Uh, and goes through the etiquette. Uh, that each participant should uh, do to make sure that it's uh, held in a very structured uh, manner. Uh, and so I think one of the concerns that um, one of our older clients sort of voiced at the very beginning is, you know, I'm not good with computers. I'm not good yeah. with my cell phone. What do I do? Uh, and so uh, it's super easy, super user friendly. You know, we are able to send a link via text message. You can click on the link and it does everything basically for you. Uh, very simple, very simple. Yeah, and if you're gonna do it, it's easy. Get a tripod like this, a little tripod. And if you put your phone in here, you got your other one? I do. If you put your phone in here. It's and got like don't... 12 phones. <laughs> Emissions. <laughs> so instead of doing it this way, up and down, you put it in this way. And that gives you a better view. And even if you're walking around, it holds it out. And then when you sit down, you put this down. And then you're able to do it eye length. So if your, eye, if your eyes are connected with the camera of the phone, then you're front and center and you're able to have a conversation with the person and you know they're paying attention, right? You have much more control over how you appear on mm -hmm. the screen. And, and you know, when, when I was at school and in my internship, my, I can remember that first day of training was all about um, uh, the studies around what made for the best impression. Um, you know, and it was just like you said, it was making sure that the camera was at eye level, uh, being close to your face as opposed to having a lot of background. We're wearing the wrong shirts for telehealth. They should be plain <laughs> shirts, even colors, not a lot of stuff in the background. You also want to be mindful too with telehealth is not to have um, identifying information in the background when you're talking with clients or when clients are zooming in on a group session. Family uh, pictures. Family pictures and the like, yeah. It, it will never be like being in person, mm -hmm. but you can approximate a really good, we've had really good success uh, with some of our facilitators being able to really do a good group online where people are engaged, uh, you can see people's reactions, yeah. you can see how what they're thinking, um, and that's really an important part of, of being a working clinician is to be able to assess that and to look at that, and uh, you don't necessarily lose that just by going to telehealth. And you could be at home, that's the thing that I think most of you need to hear right now is that a lot of people just can't get out right now. They just, they're scared to death of going out. And I don't blame them. I mean, I go to the grocery store and I go home and that's it. You know, I'm well, not you make me go to the grocery store. Yeah, I don't <laughs> <laughs> And then clean up before you come in the house. <laughs> but, but if you're able to, if you're scared about going out or have those that anxiety, you could do this at your home. You know, you could have a therapist sitting with you and working through that anxiety. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think is really important right now is knowing that you don't have to do this alone. There are people there for you, just like our 12-step meeting that's going on every day. 
I mean, there's one at 7 a.m. I think there's over 150 people on. Um, this one, we always have 30 to 40 people on every single day and one-on-one -on -one sessions. I think that's the most important. You don't have to go anywhere and ha create more anxiety around this. You could stay at home and be engaged through telehealth. And we'll show you how to get on the free platforms. We'll show you how to get on the ones that are with licensed clinicians. We'll show you all the different ways that you could, we could support you. That's really our goal. That, yeah. That's the feedback that I got today from a client that admitted on Monday, I think mm -hmm. it was. You know, I checked in with her each day uh, and her feedback was, I would have been sitting in my home in misery, mm -hmm. but you guys gave me an opportunity to share it with other people and not feel so bad about my current situation. One guy got 30 days clean. Another woman has three weeks clean that comes to our three o'clock yes. meeting every day. And they wouldn't have had that if they didn't have the support of this telehealth platform. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think when you think uh, about reasons why people don't access treatment. I'm um, sure if you're in a rural area, maybe there's not a professional who's appropriate. Um, but you know, you think about living in LA, who wants to get in their car at four o'clock on a Friday afternoon, yes. even if you only have to drive a couple miles to the therapist's <laughs> office. It's really great at eliminating excuses that people put up uh, for going to therapy or participating in, in something for their own mental health. You can access almost any kind of support online. Um, when you can break down the barriers to access like that, it's really great. I think the way of the future is going to be once we're able to get back into the community, I think even though we're able to do that, this is going to be a huge part of it. I think we're going to continue these and at our community room here, we're going to put up a camera where we could have the big screen TV in the background where people could be zooming in for the meeting but then there'll also be people in the room because i really believe all around the world people are going to start using this type of, of platform to connect with other people another thing that i wanted to show you is getting something like this when you're sitting at your computer having the camera again straight up so getting a little platform like this before i had this I would use a little box. I would get a box out of my kitchen, put it on there or pop. Yeah, and this works great for iPads, which are a little bit better than iPhones or laptops. So even if you don't have a full desktop, which would be the ideal situation, uh, maybe you have an iPad, maybe you have a, what are the other ones kind of called? A, a tablet. tablet. Um, this is a really great way to make yourself more accessible online uh, for these meetings. And you know, you, you talked about the wave of the future. I mean, there isn't a business today that isn't operating with... Without this. Without Everybody's this. doing it, right? Yeah. Now. Every business out there is doing this. So just using those type of tips to really know how to stay engaged through telehealth. And, you know, a lot of people are concerned about safety, and especially if you're doing therapy, mm -hmm. if you're talking about your deep, dark secrets. There are a lot of things that people can do if you're hosting meetings, if you're doing therapy. You know, we have a waiting room for most of our rooms yeah. that we use. Some of them are password protected. Um, you know, obviously, you don't want to post uh, the addresses. Um, many of you have heard of the Zoom bombers. Uh, which uh, Zoom has really done a good job at kind of implementing strategies against that. Um, but this can be a very safe, it's good to ask the questions, what do you do to protect us from being yep. safe in this space? Uh, because there should be a plan in place and that is important because uh, you know you have to feel safe in order to wanna share and yep. to feel, to be able to be vulnerable like that. I believe it's so, so important with so much going on externally that you have some type of resource to deal with the internal mm -hmm. conflict that mm -hmm. most of us are dealing with. I mean, even us that's in the profession, please, it please, it please. down, right? It does, it, it helps, brings, yeah. you know, it keeps me balanced uh, so that when I answer the phone, I'm not, my mind isn't going 100 miles an hour. So guys, pick up the phone, call, seek support, get information on telehealth, use these tips so that you can better assist yourself during these, these horrible times. You can go to our website at kenseelyrehab.com and click on the online services tab. Online and then there's a therapy there and then there's also free, again, free meetings that we really wanna encourage you to go to. I mean, it doesn't cost anything. It's easy access and it's the way of the future. Yeah, we're gonna be seeing a lot more of it so we might as well make it as easy as possible. Love it. So, and if you have any questions, call us because we'd love to show you how to do it and get engaged. So thanks for checking in and our information on telehealth.